Uncovering Microsoft Azure. Hey everybody, this is Ben Finkel, and in this nugget, let's talk about what makes Microsoft Azure such a cool and compelling cloud service provider in the marketplace today. I want to talk a little bit about what Microsoft Azure is, how it stands out against its field of competitors, and what makes it interesting for you personally as a cloud solution. I think the simplest way to describe or sum up Microsoft Azure is that it's Microsoft's collection of integrated services inside of the cloud. But that doesn't really do it justice, right? Integrated services, what are those? They're the things that every business needs to use every day, every minute, every second, really. We're talking about database servers and file servers. We're talking about virtual machines and web applications and identity management, access control, um, data analytics. The list goes on and on and on. It is a gigantic collection of services, and they are, inside of Microsoft Azure, tightly integrated. That means that they can interface with one another, they can use one another to perform different tasks, and that integration is largely um, insulated from us as developers, as users of the system. We don't have to worry about setting up or creating or developing those integration points. Microsoft has handled that for us. Now, I put the cloud here in scare quotes, and I did that for a reason, because I think that there's still some confusion out there about what the cloud is. And I want to be clear that, generally speaking, when we're talking about the cloud, we're talking about public cloud services. These are things that are out there running in a data center that's connected to the internet that anyone inside of the general public can access and use. When you're running things inside of the cloud, you are running your systems on a shared environment. And this is in contrast to things like private cloud systems or private on-premise enterprise systems, which are maybe a more traditional way that companies have implemented IT solutions. So those private systems are the things that are running inside of your building or inside of your data center. You own the equipment, you own the software, you own the employees that maintain the equipment. You're worried about making sure that that stuff has power. You're worried about making sure that they stay cool, they don't overheat, all of that stuff. When you're working in a public cloud service, you've offloaded all that. You've outsourced all that to this third-party company, and you're simply accessing it over the internet. And this is pretty cool, right? This means that your users can access everything over the internet. And your users are going to be utilizing and working on your systems in a wide variety of ways these days, right? That means if they're at the park or they're at the gym, at the beach, right? They can get into the systems and the applications that you offer, and they can work. They can get things done. That even works, you know, at home and office. I suppose people still work in an office sometimes these days. So utilizing a public cloud just gives you an incredible amount of flexibility and reach in that sense. It's also important to know that the public cloud works for your developers and your administrators. You are doing your work. You're putting these things, this development, up into the cloud, again, from wherever you are. You're not concerned about the fact that the data center might be in Tucson and your office is in Austin. It doesn't matter because they don't need to be anywhere near each other because you're leveraging the power of the public internet in order to expose these interfaces, expose this system to everyone. So that's what we mean when we talk about the cloud. It's out there, available on the internet, accessible from any number of places. And Microsoft's solution inside of the cloud, Microsoft Azure, that's what we're here talking about today, has a number of cool features that make it especially appealing. It's incredibly scalable, right? And that means that the cloud services that you're taking advantage of can grow in size to meet the demand, meet the traffic, meet the usage patterns that you have for your implementation, for your application, for your environment. If you've got um, a retail website that needs to scale up and handle a whole big load of traffic during Black Friday weekend, that's a, a big retail weekend here in the United States, well, Microsoft can handle that for you. You can schedule that scale up, or you can actually have it dynamically respond to increase traffic and apply more resources to your retail website so that your website is responsive, so you don't lose traffic, you don't lose customers. That's scalability. Scalability, I think, is also important on the reverse side, descalability, if you want to call it that. When your traffic patterns reduce, when they slow down, Microsoft Azure will scale down the number of services and the number of resources that are being applied to your application or your website so that you're not paying for stuff that you don't need. That's a really big deal. This is incredibly important because it means that you're only paying for what you need, what you use, as opposed to having to develop a big, expensive system that's only really being fully utilized at some points in time. Microsoft Azure is also worldwide. Of course, Microsoft is a giant, global, enormous corporation, and they have data centers all over the planet. That affords you a ton of features, things like geo-replication for your data and your services, so that A, 
you know, you can handle disasters. If the power goes out in Tucson for whatever reason, that's where your data center is, you're not worried because you've got a backup data center in Montreal that's going to handle this load. Or if your users are scattered around the globe, they may be able to get faster, better performance by being dynamically redirected to a data center that's closer to them geographically. Microsoft Azure also offers a cool combination of both infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. And you're going to run into these acronyms, IIIS and PAAS, a lot when you're working with cloud environments and cloud systems. Infrastructure as a service is the idea that your cloud provider, Microsoft Azure, is handling all of the infrastructure for you. They're worried about literally physically the nuts and bolts of the computers. They own the data center, they own the building, they're ensuring that the climate controls are appropriate, etc. You're only worried about getting your operating system spun up, getting your server software installed, making sure that they are configured from a software standpoint to appropriately supply whatever solution or implement whatever solution you need to use. PAAS, on the other hand, Platform as a Service, takes that management a step further and offloads nearly all of the management onto the cloud provider's shoulders. That means things like setting up the servers, installing the operating system, ensuring that drivers are up to date, just to pick something out of the blue there. That's all handled by them. You don't need to worry about any of that. All you're worried about is developing your solution and deploying it out into the platform. And that works for web servers. It works for database servers. It works across most of the service offerings inside of Microsoft Azure. And that's one of the cool things that they do is they allow you to pick and choose and integrate between both of these, IIAS and PAAS, to meet your needs. So you're not stuck with one mode of working with the cloud or the other inside of Microsoft Azure. You're getting to use both. Now, cloud services are not exactly a new thing at this point. And if this isn't your first rodeo, you've probably heard about some of them before. There's a lot of different vendors for them. Amazon Web Services is a big one. Google has a neat offering in their Google Cloud Platform, IBM Softlayer, Rackspace, etc. So why use Microsoft Azure? What makes Microsoft Azure a compelling choice against all these different offerings in the field. And I think that there's actually some really good reasons to consider Microsoft Azure. A big one is their ability to handle hybrid cloud solutions. This is a growing field in which you are using or your organization is using a combination of both on-premise cloud services as well as public cloud services. You need to mirror data or mirror services both between your local systems and globally distributed public cloud systems. Microsoft Azure makes this really easy to do. Because it's Microsoft and they are largely running Microsoft software, things that you are familiar with, your organization, your business is familiar with using, you're going to find that the integration with Microsoft Azure with your existing implementation is very clean and easy to do. And that's things like, you know, Windows Server, of course, but also something like BizTalk, which you might already be using. There are cloud services to make sure that you can leverage these things across both your on-premise site as well as Microsoft Azure's public cloud services. In that same vein, Microsoft Azure has incredibly robust identity management. And if you run into business right now, you probably know that Active Directory, Microsoft Active Directory, which is a part of Microsoft Server, is a pretty ubiquitous identity management platform. A lot of companies are using that. Well, Microsoft Azure integrates. It actually has an Azure Active Directory service. So it integrates with your Active Directory natively, again, giving you this great hybrid cloud integration point so that you know that you're getting enterprise class identity management across all your cloud platform solutions. You're not limited or locked down to the identity management software or system that's inside of that cloud. You're going to be able to speak to a wide range of services outside of Microsoft Azure while still maintaining the security that you need inside of Microsoft Azure. Another cool feature or benefit of Microsoft Azure is that because it's Microsoft again, you're probably using admin tools that you are familiar with. You're going to use Visual Studio, the number one programming IDE on the planet, in order to program platform as a service, to connect to compute machines, to spin up SQL servers. You can also use uh, PowerShell or Web Matrix. There's even command line operations that work inside of not just Windows, but Linux and Macintosh, etc. These are tools that you're going to be happy and comfortable and familiar with working with. When you're trying to build a workforce that needs to work inside of the cloud, it can be difficult to find someone who is skilled in your particular cloud service implementation. Well, Microsoft Azure makes that a little bit easier because there is obviously already a giant pool of workers on the planet who are already skilled with these tools and you can take advantage of, you can leverage that existing workforce to on-ramp and get them up to speed on Microsoft Azure very quickly. Another important point, and I think this actually surprises a lot of people, but Microsoft Azure is a very open 
platform. You can use, of course, .NET with IIS and SQL Server. Those are Microsoft tools. You would expect them to be available in some capacity inside of Microsoft Azure, and they are absolutely there, but you're not limited to Microsoft tools. You want to use Linux machines? Hey, they've got that for you. You want to use Java or Node.js? All of these open source tools are available to you to spin up easily right inside of Microsoft Azure. You are not limited to Microsoft's solutions. You have an incredibly wide range of solutions that are actually available to you. And on top of that, you have an incredibly wide range of features that are available to you. There's compute, web, data, analytics, uh, virtual networking, CDN, integration, all these different things. In fact, check this out. I'm just going to bring up the Microsoft Azure web interface portal really quick here so you can see some of the things that they offer. When I click new, look at this list of services. There's compute, here's web and mobile, here's data and storage, right? I can go right into this marketplace as well to see all of the different solutions that they have. And I couldn't even begin to talk through all this. I mean, let's see here. We've got um, developer services. I don't even know what these are. But look at all of the different click to deploy developer service templates that they have available and ready to go. So you are not limited in any way by using Microsoft Azure to simply a narrow window of Microsoft tools and products. You have the entire ecosystem, really, of modern uh, web technologies available to you in Microsoft Azure. All right, so you just heard me give what sounded like a long-winded kind of sales pitch for Microsoft Azure, and you're asking yourself, what's in it for me? Why do I care about this? And that's a good question. I think it's perfectly valid, but it's got a good answer. So if you're already running a business, if you already have systems that you either need to migrate into the cloud or are already running inside of the cloud, there's a lot of great things about Microsoft Azure. First of all, your on-ramp and your time to market is unprecedented. And I mean that. You can spin up inside of Microsoft Azure Cloud for literally zero cost. It costs zero dollars to get started on the cloud. You just go to portal.azure.com, you can sign up and you can begin using Microsoft Azure Cloud with a pay-as-you-go service where you simply pay for what you use on a monthly basis. You get invoiced at the end of the month for the usage on, side of, on the cloud. And there's a pretty generous free tier, so you can actually start to develop and test and prototype systems inside of Azure without having to worry about paying a single penny. You've also got easy migration strategies due to the fact that it is Microsoft and it's running Microsoft tools and utilities on it. So if you are already a Microsoft shop, hey, you're already halfway there. It's not only good for your bottom line, though. It's also good for your employees, for your workforce. Data shows that a mobile workforce is a more productive workforce. Like I was talking about earlier, people are no longer working simply in the office. They're working from home. You know this. They're working from the beach. They're working from the park. They're working while they walk their dog. We're working all the time. And enabling us to do that from our tablets, from our phones, from our laptops, wherever we are when we have an internet connection is one of the great features of moving to the cloud in general, and it's one of the great features of Microsoft Azure. You want to be paying attention to that. That's really important. You can also leverage data analytics inside of the cloud to really improve the service that you're offering to your customers. And I think this is an often overlooked point. But because you have the power of a large infrastructure behind you when you're working in the cloud, you can start to perform some really interesting and really neat data analytics at an incredibly low cost. The sort of analysis that was previously limited to you know, large companies with a lot of resources and a big budget is now available to really just about anybody with an internet connection. Get your data up in the cloud and you can very cheaply start to analyze it and figure out how to make things better for your customers. Okay, but maybe you're not an existing business owner. Maybe you're not already a company that is seeking to leverage the cloud. Maybe you are a recent college graduate who's looking for their first job in the IT field. Maybe you are an existing IT employee who's transitioning between jobs and needs to keep their skills up to date. Is Microsoft Azure a reasonable solution for you? And yeah, absolutely it is. First of all, companies are using public cloud services more and more every year. This is an enormously growing field right now, and it quite simply represents the way that we are going to do business going forward, at least for the foreseeable future. Cloud services are important. Microsoft is a big part of that. They're one of the most popular cloud service providers in the entire field. Demand for employees skilled with cloud services is also at an all-time high right now. And what does that mean? That means money. That means getting a good job and getting paid. And that's what we all want to do, right? We want to get that big paycheck. We want to land that good job. Well, you're going to need to be skilled in a cloud service, and Microsoft Azure is an important one to know. So here's what I'd tell you. I'd say go ahead and check out Microsoft Azure. They've got three awesome certification courses, 70-532, 533, and 534. 
go ahead and check those out. Get skilled, get certified in Microsoft Azure, and don't be this little confused emoticon guy here. Be this awesome emoticon guy here with the sunglasses because he is way cooler. Well, that concludes this nugget on uncovering Microsoft Azure. We took a high-level look at Microsoft Azure, what makes it compelling as a cloud service provider, both in a field of competitors as well as for you personally. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.